What's up guys, it's Track, and I figured I would open up today's adventure with a review. So this is the Guardians of the Galaxy Rocket Raccoon Nerf Blaster. It is of course branded content. Guardians of the Galaxy was an awesome, awesome movie. It broke a few molds and it actually gave us an exceptional uh, kind of baseline for what a branded content blaster should be with the Star-Lord Quad Blaster. It was half prop, half blaster, stronger than both. This is uh, probably going to be a massive disappointment, but I feel it is owed a fair review. So, we've got the Guardians logo, we've got a kid in a Rocket Raccoon mask demonstrating it. It is a Smart AR 4 Dart Blaster. Now, Rocket is known for having some of the biggest and baddest blasters in his squad, both in the comics and in the movies. He is definitely a... Uh, a heavy, which is hilarious because he is in fact a tiny uh, marsupial type creature. Are, are raccoons marsupials? I don't know. Don't don't hurt my feelings in the comment section if I'm wrong, guys. So, this is a pump action blaster. You have to pull it back and forward. It is, of course, a springer, and it comes with four uh, black darts. They are, of course, uh, Hasbro standard elite darts. I also brought out a medley of other darts to test this with. I don't actually see range claims on here but the one thing that this blaster does well that I'm not going to critique it for is that if you have a child who is a huge fan of the Guardians universe and they want to play as Rocket I think that this would accomplish that pretty well it says ages five and up and as far as blaster systems go the pump action Springer is tried and true one of the simplest and easiest to use for even the smallest of nerfers. So these are going to load up into the Smart AR system up on the front. This exposed screw up here that's silver, not black, uh, is, is kind of tacky IMO. Uh, the deco is really, really lackluster. This looks a lot like a, uh, a Busby blaster almost in that regard. Now, there is a handguard that I haven't attached yet, so maybe that'll make it better. Box art is pretty cool. Let's definitely attach all of the, the funky stuff to it, but not, not exciting aesthetically so far. Now this is the stock, and I assume it will snap right into place like that. Once it's on, it is on, so uh, if you want it to be a compact small blaster, then I would not add that, and then these are like kind of hand guards. Now, once you've attached all of the attachments, it actually becomes remarkably less comfortable. I do have large sized hands, but you can see that there's no comfortable way for me to hold the blaster. If I try and torque it this way, it actually cuts into my wrist. If I hold it this way, it's still not super duper comfortable because these are grinding up against my knuckles. So not putting on the accessories might actually be a benefit in this case. It looks super plain without it and super weird with it, but that's going to be a personal choice. So as far as its ranges or performance goes, not terrible, not great, definitely not elite performance, even from a shouldered position up here. We're only getting ranges of about 40 feet or 45 feet. The accuracy of the blaster is okay. I wonder why it didn't, we had a fail to fire. There we go, fired that time. So the Smart AR system is a wonderful thing and allows Hasbro to make a lot of this branded content pretty easily. And this is not super expensive. I think that it costs more than the Star Wars or the, it, it definitely costs less than a lot of the Star Wars branded content, which is great, but it's more than I think the Quad Blaster cost originally. I want to say that this is 25 and the Quad Blaster was 20, so uh, that's three out of four on box, so not, not terrible. Not a comfortable blaster. You really have to be a small nerfer who's really into Guardians of the Galaxy for this to be worth it. That is the only circumstance I can think of that it would be worth purchasing if you're just a collector I would leave it in the box and not play with it because it's not uh, gosh that that handle and stock combo is just killing me not a comfortable blaster not even a particularly good-looking blaster it looks like they kind of re rushed this one out because it had been made previously so it seems like they rushed it out so that it would be on the shelves so that when kids see Guardians 2 they can uh, beg their parents to purchase this one for them but this is a huge thumbs down from the channel, the performance is lackluster. You're much better off buying a Retaliator, a non-branded Nerf Blaster that will give you uh, some some delivery of hits. And then, if you're a huge Guardians fan, I highly recommend 
going out and hunting down the Star Lord Blaster because I think that it's better. I wish that they had put that back on the shelves because I think that it's getting pretty pricey on eBay. But if you're interested in purchasing this or purchasing the Star Lord Quad Blaster that I mentioned, I'll put links in the description box below. Let's go see the movie now, though. All right, guys, so we're trying the whole blending vlog into things things. So the Draculina is here with the lovely Miss Jackie of Team FDL and the rest of Team FDL. And I'm actually, no sooner have they arrived than I decided to give Tiny Zoe illegal substances. So these are, these are no bueno in the States, but I figured that since she's never had one, I'd give her one to try. <laughs> you know what they are, right? Okay, so the trick to them is put the whole thing in your mouth at once and swallow. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the rifle's like half your size. <laughs> okay, so tonight I got a special package in. And this is Zoe, and Zoe has made Super Person before, and Zoe is cooking this entire fish for everyone to eat. How's it gonna be, Zoe? Awesome. Zoe says it's gonna be great. Actually, the lady type folks are cooking. Not in like a stereotypical way, just in a they're better at it way, and we've surrendered. So, I'm going to exit. I'm gonna get in trouble. Oh, you're so gonna get in trouble. I'm gonna get in trouble. I will. All right, so what I'm working on is that I just got this stuff in. So we're trying the whole new like vlog on main channel type format, which means that EOC is working on a thumbnail for a video. And this mysterious little package, this is Team FDL, also known as Jesse. This is Mini FDL, also known as Aiden. That's Medium FDL. Medium, medium FDL? FDL upstairs. Oh, I keep calling her Tiny FDL. <laughs> This is like the worst package opening I've ever done, and Pat's just watching me struggle with it. So, uh, this is a voltmeter, a bunch of wire, because I guess uh, containment crew doesn't think I have wire, a switch, what appear to be some Halvary motors from Aussie Land, multiple different uh, switches and components in there, so that's pretty cool. This is the same roller type switch that I use for all of my builds anyway, and then they also sent this cage. This cage has Screws inside to set the uh, motors onto the cage. Now, I'm not sure if I'm gonna go with the full 180 build, but this is, I think, the Black Steel Props prototype cage. And that's, of course, uh, my man Ben, who sent me translucent parts in the past. So, the big thing in this package is these. These are the, and I'm losing them, these are the Containment Crew Cyclone uh, flywheels. Now, they have a very slight concave profile compared to the hooligan flywheels, they're actually much subtler. So you can kind of see that as I hold them up to the camera like so. They're also a little bit thicker and they're uh, not, I think, I'm not sure if they're made out of Delrin or ABS. I didn't actually get figures on that. But since they sent the cage, we'll use the cage. I don't want to use the motors that they use because I'd rather this project be done quickly and I think that they would rather it be done quickly as well. I like the switch and I like the voltmeter and I, I like their, uh, I'm not going to use the mini connector, but I will use the Dean's, uh, not Dean's, the XP60 connector that they sent. So let's get to work. Aiden actually already cracked open the strife for me. Nerfing in vlogger mode is hard. So we're just going to gut this and install it. If you guys haven't figured out yet that I can put one of these together in my sleep, then I'll link uh, different strife mod guides in the description box below. Let's go. So, multiple packages. This package is very special. Since I said I didn't really want to do 180s because I didn't want to do shell cutting, this is ideal. These are a bunch of motors that my friend Michelle sent over. And they're actually named after her. So, you can barely see on the camera here that they are Michelle 2.0s. Really hard to read that, but they're laser engraved with that. They're supposed to be ultra high torque 130s that get excellent spin up times. I'm really looking forward to that. Uh, this is, I don't know, like completely arbitrary because between the new motors and the new flywheels, we have no way of telling if this is a good combo, but I think that the, the FPS will reflect that it's at least a decent combination and you should be able to replicate it pretty easily because Containment Crew sells the wheels in the cage and Michelle sells the motors. So this is the blend that I'm going with so you'll know exactly what kind of internals are in this guy. And I'm going to teach 
Aiden had a solder in the process. There we go. So super late showing of Guardians means that we are like the last people in the theater. It's totally shut down. I don't know, what did you think, Zoe? Zoe slept through half the movie. <laughs> How many after credit scenes are there? Only five. Only five, guys. Only five. Like, that's oh. a totally reasonable amount to sit through. Seriously sit through to the, the very, very end. You'll know the very end because they flash the Marvel Studios thing. And then, it, then it's actually over. Aiden, was it pretty cool? Yeah. All right, awesome. Jesse? The girls are in the bathroom because we're playing my favorite game, Waiting on Draculina. All right, so EOC and I are actually editing together the video that you guys are watching right now, so that's pretty neat. But I figured that we needed like an ending segment, something to explain why it goes review into vlog style. And the answer is that I'm really trying to get <laughs> vlog style stuff going on on the, the main channel just a little bit here and there and see if you guys like it. I don't know if you guys are going to like it, but as one of my Patreon rewards, I'm trying to start to do daily vlogs and... The honest truth is that if the YouTube adpocalypse, adpocalypse, isn't gonna get any better anyway, then like, why not try a few goofy things on the main channel? So hopefully you guys enjoyed. This is kind of like a fun look at how projects actually go together. And I think that that could be really interesting, especially since right now I have so many projects going on. So the truth is that projects usually come together in pieces over days. So they don't all come together at once. Today we worked on the tail end of some projects and we built that, uh, containment crew cyclone wheel setup rig with the Michelle motors. So those materials are in the description box below. Thank you guys very much for watching. Guardians was awesome. Go see it. Much love. Nerf on. Drag out. Listen.